I know I said in my last video that I was going to do a books I read while I was gone, books I'm going to read before the end of the year, book hole and then book unhole. But um, it's now January. So I can't really do a, a books you want to read before the end of the year. So I'm just going to include all that stuff in my 2020 um, wrap up videos that I normally do every year. I'm not going to do as many that I normally do, but this video is basically combining a whole bunch. Basically, you saw the title, you know what this is. Basically, it's my 2020 bookish year in review and then 2021 goals, which I did this in 2018 when I like first started my booktube channel when I hadn't read that much and I was just like quickly wrapping up everything. And that's basically what I'm doing again because I didn't read that much. So yes yes the way that i say i'm gonna do stuff and then i don't do it like the way that i filmed that in november for it to go up in november and then i leave it to like january so last year i think i did like all of the books that i read plus stats reviewing 2019 and the goals for 2020 top 20 books i want to read in 2020 20 most anticipate uh, and piss and piss 20 most anticipate oh my god jesus christ i can't fucking say it <laughs> 20 most anticipated books of 2020 favorite books worst favorite books i think that's it is that all i did and then like my november and december wrap up and then top 20 k-pop songs of 2020 no Top 19 K pop songs of 2019. I'm going to do a top 20 of 2020. I literally can't talk. What time is it? It's 1 a.m. I can't talk. Sorry. <laughs> so this video is going to be like reviewing my 2020 goals, 2021 goals, what I read in 2020, favorite book, worst book. And a couple of stats. I'm not going to talk too much about stats. I'm only going to do a couple because if I go really in depth with all of the stats, it'll just make me shit about my reading last year. And I don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to talk about like the little, the tiny, tiny basic stats. And as you can see, I have a bare face. I look like a 12 year old boy. So while I talk about all of this, I'm going to be doing my makeup because... I don't really need a reason, I just want to. <laughs> I just want to sit down, chat, do my makeup, make it chill, not like really like put together, like talking to a friend about my year and how shit it's been and my reading and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to do. I forgot to mention, I'm using a ring light and a microphone. I mainly got this microphone for ASMR. Why not amp up my sound quality on my main channel? I'm going to stop rambling and let's just get into it. So... Where do we start? I think I'm going to start out with just all the books I read. So, I forgot how hard it is to multitask when you do your makeup. My goal for this year, well, last year, was to read 75 books. Ooh! That went so well. But, I mean, like, I was doing well at the start. I was reading, like, six books a month. It was amazing. And I was doing my booktube and I was doing my reading journal and everything was fine and dandy. And then COVID came in. So I only read 32 books, which is at least half. I only read 32 books. It's at least half. <laughs> that is not correct. It's still not my worst reading year. My worst reading year was 2018 when I was graduating. My cat is like laying in my pile of mess and he's so cute. So yeah, it still wasn't my worst reading year. My worst reading year was 2018 because I only read like 19 books and half of them were for school. Should I like mention what I'm putting on my face or like does nobody care? I'll at least have it in like the description if anyone anyone is even interested in the makeup. I think everyone's just interested in how shit my year's been. Ha! <laughs> I feel like with COVID, you either thrived or it was like the worst thing ever. Like, of course, it was horrible for everyone, but I feel like you either were like, oh my God, wow, I now have so much free time to do all of these things that I've been wanting to do for so long. And then 
like you have so much time to read and some people have read like a hundred books this year or or just like a shit ton of books and then there's other people who because they weren't doing anything they didn't have motivation and just sat on their bum and didn't have any motivation or creativity which is the group that I'm in so that sucks but I think now I'll just list off all of the books that I read so I'll just go on my Goodreads on my trusty laptop. So the books I read were like one chapter of Murder Mayhem Short Stories by Christopher P. Semtner. I don't know how to pronounce that. But basically it's a short story collection that my sister owns and I read like one story and I added it to my currently reading on my Goodreads but then I wasn't reading any of it. So I just decided that any time that I read another short story, I'll just edit the review and put it in my read and then, yeah, just read it as slowly as I want. Maybe I'll read like one short story a year, maybe I'll read like five, but any time that I finish a short story, I'll just update it so then it's like updated. I don't know if that made any sense. Every Heart of Doorway by Seanan Maguire. Vicious by V.E. Schwab, Saga Volume 5 by Brian K. Vaughan, The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White, The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling, Saga Volume 8 by Brian K. Vaughan. Is it Vaughan or Vaughan? I've heard Vaughan, but I keep pronouncing it as Vaughan. Not That Bad, Dispatches from Rape Culture, edited by Roxane Gay. Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schultz. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Oseman. Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. Of Curses and Kisses by Sandhya Menon. Saga Volume 7 by Brian K. Vaughan. Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. Saga Volume 8 by Brian K. Vaughan, Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins, City of Bones by Cassandra Clare, The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, Macbeth by William Shakespeare, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling, Orange Volume 1 by Ichigo Takano, Saga Volume 9 by Brian K. Vaughan, White Rage, The Unspoken Truth of Our Racial Divide by Carol Anderson, Orange Volume 2 by Ichigo Takano, The Princess Bride by William Goldman, Eliza and Our Monsters by Francesca Zapia, The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins, and Nick and Charlie, a solitaire novella by Alice Oseman. So, yeah, that's the 32 books that I read. Not that great, but I digress. I mean, 32 books, it doesn't sound that bad, but I feel like, I don't know if it's just that I was like in a reading slump or whatever but the things that I read there were some that I loved but most of them I just thought they were like okay and I think I didn't give that many books five stars other than a lot of graphic novels because now I am up to date with Saga and I read a lot of volumes of Saga last year so a lot of them I gave five stars. Heartstopper I obviously gave five stars but I already knew that that was a favorite of mine and so, like, I didn't read that many just, like, fiction books that I liked and loved and fell in love with. There was a lot that I liked and, like, gave four stars, but I didn't, like, find any new faves other than one, which I'll get into in a sec. So, even though 32 books, it's still good. Like, the average person normally doesn't read that many books. But, like, what I was reading wasn't what I was loving. So, if you take into account that, it wasn't that good. I might, like, come up with, like, the stats of, like, the ratings. I didn't make that yet. Or I wasn't planning on making it. But I might while editing. Depends on my laziness, to be honest. The main stats that I have for this video, though, are mainly just, like, the ones that Goodreads gives to you. The amount of pages I read... On Goodreads, it says that it's like 10,700, but I then had to take away like 400 of that because of the Murder Mystery Mayhem short story collection because I only read like one short story because that technically doesn't count. So in my calculation, I did it twice, once with the Goodreads one, taking away 400, and then 
another one with the ones that I had in my reading journal added up from all the months and then adding the page numbers of all the other books. The first one was 10,324 and then the other one was 9,967. So I just rounded it to 10,150 which is kind of surprising considering the fact that I read 31 books and last year I read 50 books but last year I read 15,906 pages whereas this year I read 10,000. So like you'd think that my reading would be like since it was like a little over half it'd be like mm, actually that kind of does make sense and then if you divide 10,150 by 365 my average pages is 28 per day whereas last year it was 43 pages per day obviously because I didn't read as much as last year that's obviously gone down which is fine I'm fine <laughs> why it's coming out all loud and squeaky because really I'm fine and like considering this year yeah 23 on a good day when I actually read should I talk a little bit about my makeup I'm now going on to eyeshadow I've done my foundation and my eyebrows but I'm now doing my eyeshadow so that when it's done I can wipe off any of the fallout and then clean it up when I do the concealer so that's what I'm doing right now and I've got this photo that I'm going off and I don't know if it's gonna go well I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills modern renaissance palette looks like this as well as the Juvia's Place the Zulu palette which it's gonna be my first time using it and I'm so excited because these colors are amazing and just like this brand in general it's black owned and it's incredible so I highly recommend so anyway, the average rating, I don't know if I did that chart, statistics of the ratings that I did for all of the books, but my average rating is 3.8, which is the exact same as last year. So that's cool, I guess. The shortest book I read was The Little Prince, which was 118, which is surprising. Like, I don't know why I find that so surprising, but like, it makes sense, you know? And then the longest book I read, which was 636 pages, which was Gobbled of Fire by, I don't know, some chick. I don't know who she is. Anyway, what's next? And then the average length of the books that I read was 337, which last year it was 318, which last year I said I wanted to get better. Not really the way that I wanted, but hey, I did do something. I have like coloured lights on, so I don't know if that's helping with the eyeshadow or not because the colours are looking different. Okay, so that's all of the stats that I have. I'm not going to do the genre, the age range or whatever because that's a bit excessive and also, to be frank, I'm too lazy for that. So, if I'm really being honest with myself, let's talk about my favourite and my least favourite book of this year. Because that's going to be fun. Woo! What should we start with? Should we talk about the worst book first or the best book? I think we'll talk about the best book first. So my favourite book, even though I didn't really read that many favourites last year, my favourite book was Vicious by V.E. Schwab. So let's talk about it. I love it. I read it like right in January. It was one of the books for booktube friends Rec reading booktuber's favourite, no, reading, reading booktuber's favourite books. Can I trust my booktube friend's recommendations? I think that's what it's called. Correct! Now that I think about it, I think that's the one. My cat is drunk. Taxi! <coughs> I read it a while ago, so I'm a bit hazy. We don't talk together. Oh god, this is looking like absolute shit already. This is not looking red whatsoever. <laughs> okay, these aren't vibrant enough. I think I need to go into my Juvia's place. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Let's go in with this bright as pink. So, ah, oh, yes, that's the color I want. 
I should have just done the whole look with the Shibuya Place one, but oh well. Honestly, I feel like I just need to continuously ask my booktube friends for recommendations because the last two books I read where I absolutely fell in love with all the characters and was rooting for everyone and absolutely fell in love with was This Mortal Coil by Emily Suvada and Vicious, which I read This Mortal Coil at the very, 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 very end of last year, so I can't add that. So I'm going to add Vicious as my favourite. Basically, this is like, how do I explain it? It's like Stranger Things meets X-Men, to be honest. Basically, two college students are doing an essay, and one of them decides to do it on exos, which is people with extraordinary powers. And then they end up testing that on themselves, and they end up getting supernatural powers. And then... 10 years later, one of them comes out of jail and wants to kill the other one. It's literally so good. I fell in love with all of the characters. All of the characters are so different from one another. I loved the way that it was written. It was written so well. It was literally like reading a movie because all of the scenes were cut in at like cliffhangers and going to another POV and then it was going back. I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but it was literally amazing. While reading it, I told the entire plot to my brother and now he's obsessed with it. Even though he hasn't read the book, he says that Vicious is his favourite book as well. So I'm thinking of reading it to him to bed like a bedtime story. He's 16, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, that's like the best one. I was thinking of saying The Cruel Prince was my favourite, but, like, the pacing was a bit slow. It wasn't, like, an exact five-star book for me. And there were so many books that I read that I thought were going to be five-star, but then they ended up just being under. Like, I loved them, and it was amazing, but, like, I didn't fully feel attached to it. But, like, the last time that happened was vicious, so... 10 out of 10 would recommend. Thank you, Nicole, for recommending it to me. I will now trust both Nicole and Jasmine from Le Morde Books with any recommendations that they have. Please, I want to read something that I love. So yes, that was a quick sum up of that. Now let's go on to the worst. I had two worsts. And one of them I rated lower than the one that I'm about to show you. But that one, I feel like I was just in a really sassy mood. And, like, I wasn't liking it. But, like, it was a more of a me thing rather than the book. Whereas this one was the book, not a me thing. So, I chose the book that is, like, just bad, in my opinion. I mean, it's not totally bad because I, I'm going to continue reading it for, like, one character... And all that. You know what? I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to show you what it is. My least favourite book that I read in 2020 was City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. Let's talk about it while I do my makeup. I don't know if I like it. It's looking very muddy and I'm not happy. I think it's because I didn't do the whole look with this palette, which is super bright. I did it with like some Anastasia, which is a bit like It's not like super bright. I'm kind of panicking though because I've nearly finished talking and I haven't finished my makeup. So let's talk about City of Trash. What? City of Bones. The only reason why I like it, and I've said this once and I'll say it again, is because of Magnus Bane. He is amazing and I'm so excited for Malik to come in because it's amazing. I got glimpses of it, but I need it now. It was mainly the characters that just like infuriated me the most with this book. Like, Clary is the most insufferable protagonist I have ever had the chance to read from. Like, she was just so dumb, so annoying. I just got so annoyed all the time with Clary. She was just so dumb and I hated how angsty it was. You know me. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I hate angst. There was a lot of slut shaming. Any time that Isabel was around, Clary was just like, "Yeah, you're a bitch." Next time you fucking put a hand on me, I'ma fucking rip your face off, bitch. What did he do? Cause he fucking pushed me next time. 
and it was so annoying. And she kept on getting jealous of Isabel and Simon. I'm really concentrating and I'm trying to talk while doing my makeup and it's not going well. I hated Simon. He was so annoying. Jace was annoying. And there was just also like sly comments that was like low-key fat shaming. I've said it in my wrap-up. I'll leave the wrap-up like up above or in the description box where I read some of the quotes from it. It just didn't age well. Like, you, when you read it, you can tell it was written in 2019. And just, I don't know. I just didn't like it. I don't like it. No, 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 I don't. Never did. Which, that's perfectly okay. I gave it a 1.5. I gave the 0.5 for Magnus and Magnus alone. And also, the main reason why I hated it is because... The incest thing started and I'm just like, please, please no, please no. No, God, please no, 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 no. I'm probably letting other, uh, other <laughs> I'm probably letting other people's opinions affect my views on it. It just, it wasn't for me. Am I going to continue it so that I can get to a clockwork prince and princess and all that? Heck yeah, I am. Am I looking forward to it? Absolutely not. The other book that I was considering saying was Of Curses and Kisses, which is probably the better choice for my worst, because that book just genuinely irritated me. It just, I still stand by my opinion that it just read like Beauty and the Beast fan fiction. That was literally what it was. And I feel bad because I know that she's a POC, but one thing that I've learnt and need to come accustomed to is that, like, even if it's by POC, there's still books that I'm not going to like. And I feel bad for giving it a bad rating, but, like, with any book, it's a gamble between whether I'm going to like it or not, you know? There's going to be books by white people that I don't like, so that's naturally going to happen with POC as well. So I shouldn't feel bad for it. I still do. I think it's worse to not read from POC. The, that's the main thing, you know? I don't know. This looks so muddy and not as bright as the person's. She maybe upped her saturation. Whatever. So that is my favourite and worst favourite book. <gasps> that looks stunning. Oh my god. Oh my god! I kind of want to make it more foiled. Put it on a packing brush. Give it a little... <gasps> yes. Yes. Yes, Gaga, you look so good. Now let's talk about the books that I wanted to read this year and how well I did with that because I made a list of 20 books I wanted to read in 2020. And I mean, I read a lot of them. So, I read technically because there were series. There was there was 28 books. Not counting it in a series, I read 7 out of the 20 books that I wanted to read in 2020, which was books from the Harry Potter series, Murder on the Orient Express, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, Not That Bad, Dispatches from Rape Culture, Eliza and Her Monsters, The Poet X, and All of the Hunger Games. Oh, shit. My phone has 10%. Oh, no. This is not going to go well. So I did read a good portion of it. It's nearly half. Nearly. So I'm just going to say it's like close to half. It's at least half. So I did read a good portion of it. The books that I didn't read were The Shining, Little Woman, To Kill a Mockingbird, Rebecca, The Diary of a Young Girl, Becoming, This Is Going to Hurt, Banish, Illuminae, The Frickin' Grisha Trilogy, the Female of the Species, Daisy Jones and the Six, and Cracked Up to Be. Which kind of sucks. I was so hoping to read Cracked Up to Be last year, but I didn't get around to it. So 2021 is going to be the year. 2021 is also going to be the year where I read the freaking Grisha trilogy. Because I swear to God, I've been saying I want to read that for ages. And it's been in so many of my TBRs and I never read it. It's going to be my goal for 2021 to finally read the freaking Grisha trilogy so then I can read freaking Six of Crows which just in general I want to get to this year anyway because like despite the fact that I've been saying I want to read it 
either way, if I hadn't been saying I want to read it, I would have pro I want to read it this year because the Netflix adaptation is coming this year. And so I want to read it before it comes out. So that's one of my goals for this year to finally, finally read it and finally read Six of Crows. Oh, I will never get over that color. It's so stunning. And I'm also planning on reading Daisy Jones and the Six soon. I was going to in my vlog from my last video, but I didn't get around to it. So I'm definitely going to be reading that soon. So yeah, I'm still going to be trying to read those books in 2021, obviously. And then the goals from last year. Some of them did not age well at all. Particularly um, reading 75 books. Because that, that was dumb on my part. My goals from last year were read 72 books, finish Harry Potter, <sighs> read Stephen King, <clears throat> focus on reading books on my physical TBR, <clears throat> and read more non-fiction slash classics, which that's probably the only one that I did. The main thing that I'm worried about is read the rest of Harry Potter, which that did not age well whatsoever and I feel like that's something I need to discuss before I continue my channel. So JK Rowling. Basically if you did not hear or you lived under, under a rock, basically JK Rowling went off on her Twitter with tweets that should probably have stayed in her drafts about trans people and made some transphobic tweets saying that sex is real and just a whole bunch of transphobic stuff and so she was revealed to be a transphobe a lot of people in the booktube community have gotten rid of their harry potter books and have stopped reading harry potter which i agree with we shouldn't be giving this transphobe any more promotion or attention for me personally i am still going to continue with the series i'm not going to be showcasing that much on my channel and we'll only briefly talk about it in like wrap ups and stuff like that like what Daniel Radcliffe said I personally agree with the fact that just because it's now been showcased that she is a transphobe and stuff like that if there are people who still like love Harry Potter don't let that hinder your experience she's already put it out to the world for us and it's something that we all love and it's nostalgic to us. I'm sorry if I'm saying any of this wrong. Or I'm like miswording what I'm saying. Yes, she wrote it and put it out to the world. But we made it our own. Our experience with it is so personal to us. That sh it has nothing to do with JK Rowling. Yes, she wrote it. But we shouldn't let what's being said hinder our experience. It's one of those situations where I feel like... You can separate the art from the artist. In a good way, though. I personally am not going to buy any merch of Harry Potter anymore. I already own the Harry Potter series, so I'm just going to read that and then be done with it and not buy it. And if I do plan on buying any merch or copies of the book, I'm going to get it secondhand. But yeah, I just wanted to put that out there and put my two cents because I wasn't in the discussion of it. So that goal did not age well. At all. I'm not even following what this girl did in the photo for her under eye. I'm just doing whatever. And then Stephen King. I kind of don't want to support him anymore because of what's been shown about it. About a certain scene at the end. I don't really want to support that. I can't find the bottle. There it is. And so I'm probably just not going to read any of his books. The only reason I really am interested in reading his books is because of the movies and I want to read the book before the movie, but I honestly don't care anymore. Like, I'm just going to watch The Shining, I'm just going to watch Misery, I'm just going to watch watch Carrie. I don't think I care about reading the books first, so yes. And then I didn't read barely any books from my physical TBR, which is still something I want to do. Now that I have the bookshelf, it's already getting full. So that's why I'm planning on doing an unhaul. And now that I've done talking about that, let's talk about my goals for this year, which they're kind of simple. So the first goal, 
I'm planning on reading 36 books. That's my Goodreads goal for this year. I don't want to put it too high in case like COVID is still going on and I lose motivation and stuff like that. I don't want to put it too high like I did last year with 75, which was too ambitious. And basically 36, how I got that number is it's three books a month. So that's definitely doable. I'll definitely be able to read more than that for one month. I'll definitely be able to read three books, hopefully per month. And even if I don't, I can read more than that on a good month and on a bad month not. Oh, I forgot to do inner corner and shit like that. Then I also want to read more series because there's a lot of series that I still haven't gotten to and that kind of stuff. So I want to read more and finish more series because I've started so many series but I haven't finished them. So I want to finally finish them and then get to series that I haven't read yet like The Diviners and I can't think of any more but I know they exist. <laughs> and then I want to continue on reading more fiction and classics because I did read a few. I read like three classics and I think like three non-fiction which is not bad but I want to read more. There's definitely more non-fiction and classics that I want to read. I started reading Becoming but I didn't finish it so I want to finish that. I want to read White Fragility because I read White Rage for the Blackathon after the events of George Floyd. So I definitely, definitely not want, need to read White Fragility and there's other books that I want to read so I can learn more about black history in America and in Australia. And then all the other like classics and stuff that I want to read on my 2020 reading list. And then, so yes, I want to continue that. And then going on from reading more nonfiction about black history, I want to read more books by POC, especially black authors, because I didn't read much this year. I realized just how little black authors I was reading from. So I definitely want to up that and just like learn and being better educated about the black experience and all other experiences with POC because obviously I'm white and privileged and I want to be more educated and stuff like that and just be just be better you know so yes that's something I really want to actively do this year and then I want to read more books that have been adapted into movies and TV shows because there's a lot of movies and TV shows as a film student that I haven't watched because I want to read the book first and I just haven't got around to those books and therefore I've been holding off watching the TV show or movie so I just want to read more books that have been adapted so I can watch the TV show and movie like To All the Boys I've Loved Before, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, After, I'm kidding, that was a joke. So yes, that is all of my goals. So that's everything I wanted to talk about, I think. I am going to do videos on my most anticipated books and my top 15 because I'm not going to continue going up with the years because once it gets to like 2025 that's going to be way too much so I'm now just going to go to 15 so the top 15 most anticipated books of this year the top 15 books I want to read this year and then the top 20 k-pop songs of 2020 so that's all of that but I'm going to go off camera finish off all my makeup because my phone is really low and then I'll be back to do the outro and all that shit so I'll be back and this is the finished look I don't know I feel like it turned out really well do I do like a beauty guru like So yes, that's my 2020 wrapped up. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope it wasn't just like, hi, uh, it's 1am and I am rambling and I'm making no sense. And I hope you don't mind that like I'm now venturing off into new things, doing makeup, doing whatever I want because I don't know, it just makes this channel more fun for me, you know, 
because like I said in my last video, my mood changes like the wind. And so, but I don't know. I like the freedom of doing whatever I want. Like if I want to do my makeup while I talk to you about this year, then I can do it, you know? So I hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more videos every week. Hopefully I stay consistent. I really just want to like have fun with this channel so i'm glad that you guys are letting me well you're not really letting me you have no choice but yes thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you on my next video i don't think i'm gonna do the boop anymore i should also mention that i'm not doing the what up guys it's steph it's too much energy and i don't have that much energy so thank you all again for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one